Hey, hey, it is Zenial Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about what runes you should keep and sell in the new B12s meta. Now, if you're not doing B12s yet, then we're going to talk about all, what runes you should really keep and sell at all stages of the game, so this video can still work for you. But I did post a progression guide video about a week ago. I'm going to put an info card on the screen. If you haven't watched that one first, I would recommend that this is kind of a follow-up to that. So with that said, uh, let's talk about first and foremost how the new B12s have kind of changed rune drops. Now we all know that in the B12s the legend drop rates have been increased and they only drop 6 star. And of those two, the really bigger deal is actually the fact that it only drops 6 star runes. So in the B10s you might get a 6 star rune, I don't know, once every 10 or 20 runs. Whereas in the B12s you're literally getting a, B, uh, you're literally getting a 6 star rune every run. And we can, they just increased it, we can hold 800 runes, but still that means you can only hold 800 runes. And just as important, if every rune is 6 star, then almost every rune is going to look like one that you want to enchant. Your Thank rune you. inventory is going to fill up really quickly, you're going to wind up with a bunch of runes you don't know what to do with, and just as important, you're not going to have enough mana to do anything with them. So what it means is that our standards are going to have to go up progressively throughout the game. Now the rule that I've always said, I call it the 600 rule, and you could actually call it the 700 rule now, but somewhere between 6 and 700, is basically you always want to have 600 runes in your inventory. Now obviously if you're just starting the game, if you're in early game, you don't, you're not there yet, it takes some time to get there. But as you go through the game, you want to just save every rune that could potentially be useful on any monster whatsoever until you reach about 600 runes. Now, ideally, your goal is that you're going to have an even distribution of all the different rune sets and all the different slots. What I usually shoot for is to have seven runes per slot per rune set, uh, sometimes a little bit more violent or a little bit more maybe swift or despair like the four sets and sometimes a little bit more of the two, four, six because there's multiple types. But as a general guideline, I shoot to have seven good runes in every slot and every rune set. And then I shoot to have about 600 to 700 total runes in my inventory. Now, uh, the reason I want to have so many runes is because when I build a new monster, um, I need to be able to put together a set that suits that monster's skills. And ideally, I'm not going to be using broken sets. Now, I've talked about this in other videos as well. Obviously, there are times where broken sets are helpful, like with attack bar boosters, or if you're trying to reach a certain damage threshold, and especially if you're earlier in the game and you just have to take advantage of the best runes you have. But the further on you go in the game, the more broken sets you use, the, the more you're really just kind of sacrificing opportunity. So the example I like to give is, imagine you have a quad roll 30 crit rate slot one rune. And you use that as a broken set to get your monster up to 100 crit rate. Well, you could use an 18 crit rate slot one blade rune along with any other blade rune in a completed set and have that same 30 crit rate bonus. So you're taking like the best rune that you may roll only once in the game ever and because you're using it as a broken set, you're basically turning it into a rare rune because you can get 18 crit rate with a double max roll. Now, that's kind of an extreme example, but it's just kind of, it's just the point that you generally want to avoid broken sets unless it's necessary for that specific monster. The other thing is that broken sets beget broken sets. So the more broken sets you use, the more broken sets you have to use because your good runes are scattered throughout in broken sets. Usually when you use a broken set, it's because you're taking two great runes to make the stats. But those two great runes mean that your average runes from that same set wind up having nowhere to go. So, by keeping lots of runes in inventory, even if they're not the greatest runes, you're going to wind up being able to build more complete sets. By completing more sets and getting more set bonuses, you're going to wind up with more overall stats on all of your monsters. You create more depth, basically. So with all of that said, your first goal in the game should be to get to 600 usable runes in inventory. Now, as you're starting in the game, obviously you're fo farming lower level dungeons and you're, you'll eventually wind up farming B10 or 11 for a while until you can build your B12 team. And while you're doing that, keeping five star runes is totally okay. Again, and you're just trying to get to 600 usable runes but you do want to try not to over invest in those five star runes because once you get to the b12s the five star runes have almost no value the only exception is if you wind up multiple rolling um, like max speed or max crit roll so if you have a five star rune that quad roll speed that's 25 speed potentially max rolls is 25 speed that rune is going to be usable for a long time 
but for the most part, uh, five star runes are not going to be super useful once you've got six star drops every single dungeon run. So my only recommendation there is not to take those runes to, um, don't take the slots one, three, or five to plus 15 at all unless it's basically a high triple roll or a quad, quad roll. And then the slots two, four, six, only take them to plus 15 if it's got decent substats and you're actively using it on a monster. Otherwise, just uh, try to conserve your mana because the, the mana depression is real, guys. We're all broke right now. Now, in six months, that'll change. Once our artifacts are built, we'll be fine. But right now, we're all broke. Uh, now, when you're in earlier game, also your emphasis is going to be on offensive stats. You're looking for crit rate, crit damage, and attack more so than the other stats. Now you do need some HP and defense, especially on the B12s, you really have to have, um, it's about 80K effective HP, which is effective HP is a measurement of HP and defense together. So when you get to those B12s, your runes do have to have some stats on them. But for the most part, to get to the B12s, what you need is the ability to do damage. So you're looking for crit rate, crit damage attack again on those runes. Now, as you're building up that rune inventory of 600, any rune that looks like it has the potential to be useful. And again, you have an emphasis on offensive stats, but if it's got speed substats, if it's got just generally high efficiency, like it's got all HP, attack, defense, percent type stats, if it's got a lot of, you know, quad roll of any one good stat, all of those runes you could keep. Uh, what you want to do is make sure you enchant every one of them to at least plus six. And as you're enchanting it, you check which substats hit. So if it's, let's say it has uh, speed, but then it also has a flat stat. You take it to plus six, if it hits the speed twice, it's a super fast rune, it's keepable. But if it hits that flat stat, maybe it's not so good anymore. And it's very cheap to take your runes to plus six, and it gives you a lot more information. So as you're starting out, you should take all those runes to plus six, and then every rune that still looks good at plus six, you keep. But once you get between six and 700 runes, the story changes a little bit. You're still gonna try and keep every rune that looks like it could be useful. But now the question you're asking yourself isn't just, is this useful? The question is, can this rune be better than the worst rune in my inventory right now? So if the answer to that is yes, then you enchant it to plus three and ask that question again. If the answer is still yes, then you enchant it to plus six and ask the question again. And if the answer is still yes at plus six, then you keep that rune and later on when you do a rune cleanup, you'll wind up getting rid of the worst runes and keeping those new runes instead. And you're gonna do kind of a continual cycling at that point where you always try and stay between six and 700 runes in inventory. As you get a bunch of new runes, you go out and build and rune a new monster. Or if you don't have new monsters to build, then you do a rune cleanup and you clean the, you sell the older runes that are now no longer as good as the new ones you've replaced them with. Now, once you have stable B12 teams, the emphasis on offensive stats is going to reduce slightly. It never goes away because we can always improve our fat Lucians, our Belagers. I mean, there's always a place to get better offensive runes. But once you have stable B12 teams, you're no longer quite as desperate for those. And that's the time where you're probably gonna start thinking a little bit more about PVP. So at that point, you're gonna be looking for more runes that give you speed, more runes that give you greater balance or efficiency, more runes that have multiple grindable stats, the grinds that you can get from raid. Uh, you're also gonna, more, most importantly, you're gonna be looking for runes that synergize. So the best example I can give is crit rate and resistance almost never belong on a rune together. There's a couple of very limited exceptions. Uh, Zingshe, the wind monkey, or uh, wind, uh, Miho, obviously. Those are monsters that can be built very effectively in resistance builds and benefit from crit rate. But generally speaking, resistance is a stat that's not grindable. It's only useful if you're putting basically max resistance on your monster. And that, that's basically because like, let's say you put 40 resistance on your monster. Most enemies that do anything like defense break or whatever have at least 20 accuracy on them. And since you have 15 resistance built in no matter what, by putting 40 resistance on your monster, it's just all wasted. You're gonna resist 20% of the time instead of 15 and you gave up a lot of stats for that. So generally speaking, there's just no value in putting resistance on your monster unless you're gonna get it up to like 80 or 90% or higher. Uh, so in that case, when you put that much resistance on a monster, if you also try and give it a ton of crit rate, it's gonna wind up being slow because there's just only, only so many stats that can, you can put on a rune. And usually monsters in resistance builds need to be faster. 
So what all of that amounts to is crit rate and resistance just don't synergize together on a rune. Resistance runes usually need to have speed on them as well. The only monsters that you're likely to build slow with resistance would be the uh, would be the harp magicians like Triana and Harmonia because you usually want those to act last on your team and they have high base speed. Even then they still need a fair amount of speed but they're going to be much slower and they can use a speed slot too. The best place to get a heavy roll resistance is actually on a speed slot too, because you're not then sacrificing speed for it. So if you get like a triple or quad roll resistance on a speed slot too, it's an amazing rune uh, for a resistance build monster that you may build later on. Now also on the B12s, you're going to start to have higher standards for your two set runes. And by that, what I mean is basically you're going to start to ask instead of for the two set runes only. So like I'm, I'm doing Necro right now. So if we were to get destroy out of necro for example when i see that destroy rune my question is no longer is this better than the worst rune in my inventory the question becomes is this better than the worst destroy rune in my inventory or can it be i should say can it be better because what you're really looking at is what's the best case scenario what's the best way this rune can roll and gem and grind so when i'm completely done pimping out my rune what's the best it can look like and can that rune look better than the worst of the other runes in my inventory? And so again, with um, whereas with the four sets, you're going to have slightly lower standards because you they're harder. it's harder to build a four set, basically. With a two set, you can take your two best runes and make an amazing set. With a four set, you have to have four best runes to reach that same quality. It's just more, more difficult to do so. So you're generally going to have lower standards for your four sets, and you're also going to have lower standards for your slots two, four, and six because those are harder to draw. So when you ask that question, can this rune be better than the best rune in my inventory, once you're doing the B12s, the question will be to compare it to runes similar to itself. Can this slot six rage rune be better than the seventh best slot six rage rune that I have right now? And if I don't have seven of them, then can this slot six rage rune be any good at all? And if the answer is yes, then I keep it. Now, as you're starting the B12s, you're still going to be working with rare runes. Um, if you get a rare rune that has great substats, especially if it has innate, it's worth rolling just to see if it double max rolls speed or double max rolls crit rate, for example. I wouldn't necessarily keep those rare runes just if it was like, let's say, HP and defense. Yeah, you could get a lot of HP and defense, but the rune's going to be slow. It's not going to be an offensive rune. Uh, but if it's got speed or crit rate, I would keep the rare rune, especially if it's a max roll, and just see if it double rolls. But as you move into later game, you're probably going to stop keeping most of those rare runes because it just gets to a point where even in a perfect situation, that rune's not going to be any better than what you have. It may be the same as what you have, but why spend a bunch of mana just to make the same runes that you already have in inventory? And then the longer you farm these B12s, the higher your standards are going to go. So for myself, I've been farming mostly Necro since the B12s came out, and that's just because I need the mana, and you make mana faster in Necro than anywhere else. So I'm at a point where I'm basically no longer rolling any rare runes. I don't even look at them. No matter what, what the rune is, if it's rare, I basically just sell it. And then if it's a hero rune, I'll take a glance, but like this rune right here that we've got on screen right now, it has max speed. I've dropped so many crazy high speed runes in these B12s, I don't have anything to do with them. So I need to start looking now for speed runes that also have other good stats. And this is flat defense and crit damage on a slot five. So the best case scenario for this rune, if it actually triple rolled max speed, it would still be a crazy fast rune. 28 speed slot five would be amazing. It would be faster than any vamp slot five I have, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm probably going to drop five more runes like this in the next hour. And if I'm going to invest the mana that I don't have to keep rolling these runes, I want to invest it into one that I'm actually going to be able to use because a 28 speed vampire rune that's completely empty in all other stats is just not going to wind up being that good for me in the perspective of how much the B12s drop. Now, I know the fact that I just sold that rune is going to get me roasted in comments. Um, here's the thing that I want to say that's really important and the reason I'm leaving this in the video. You need to base it based on how much you farm and how many drops you get. I farm a ton and you guys have seen my, my team in the background. Uh, I'm doing, let's call it 70 runs an hour. That means I'm dropping 76 star runes an hour. 
That means I'm dropping 10 vampire runes an hour, which means I'm dropping at least one legend vampire rune an hour in general, or maybe one vamp legend every two hours. So basically, I'm just dropping so many vamp runes that I have nothing to do with all these runes. Like, I'm out of rune inventory. I can't put them on monsters fast enough. And so I had to start raising my standard. Now, if you only farm a couple of hours a day, then your standards aren't going to be as high as it, somebody who farms much longer than that. So again, the question is always really just, can this rune be good enough for me to use? Again, and I can't emphasize this enough, you guys need to adjust your standards based on how much you farm, based on the quality of runes that you currently have and based on your stage of game. The single most important thing is to remember that you don't have to go for the same rune quality as the streamers and creators that you watch on YouTube. You don't have to go for the same rune quality as people who are in, in the SWC right now. All you ever have to do is make sure that the rune you're keeping today is better than the worst rune in your inventory. If you do that, you'll continually be incrementally upgrading, and over time, those incremental upgrades will make you much stronger. As opposed to if you just constantly try to wait for that amazing perfect rune, what winds up happening is you just don't have enough runes in inventory, so it stops your progression because you don't build monsters or you don't rune monsters well. It also results in you using more broken sets. And again, the more broken sets you use now, the more broken sets you have to use in the future. And all of that stuff works together to just generally slow your progression. So the biggest thing, if there's one big thing I want you guys to take away from this video, it's that you should save lots of usable runes. Again, remember the 600 rule or call it the 700 rule. You should try to have six to 700 usable runes in inventory, and then you should continually be trying to upgrade the worst rune that you have into something better. And every time you upgrade, it basically just makes your account that tiny bit better. And over the course of time, over the course of a long period of time, you'll find that your total overall rune quality has improved. And because you're keeping that balanced approach where you're keeping lots and lots of decent runes, you'll find that you're able to make more complete sets and you get a ton of benefits from having those complete sets over broken sets. And so on that note, that is it for today's video, guys. Uh, so as always, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. We're gonna keep that rune, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you're still with me to this point, then that means that you probably liked the video, found it entertaining, or even better, both. So please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below because those things help the channel grow, and more importantly, they show me that the video is useful, and that's the whole reason I do this in the first place.